Welcome everybody to this this week's Texas Connect Australia event. We're very pleased to have Kat Miller with us here today. Thank you, Kat, for sharing some time with us today. For those of you who don't know Kat, Kat Miller is the founder of Amplify Your Influence. She helps business owners grow influential businesses, create their dream lifestyle and make a meaningful impact. She specializes in helping service-based women entrepreneurs, coaches and experts to attract and sign up more clients consistently through her signature client attraction formula and inner circle. Since 2004, Kat has owned and run successful businesses in three different countries. And over the past 10 years, she's delivered over 6,000 one-on-one coaching sessions and run over 300 events. So do I take it that you really like talking, Kat? <laughs> and oh, listening. <laughs> that's a lot of work, hours of, of talking and listening. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Kat has assisted thousands of people around the world to communicate their authentic message, to build more authority and trust in the marketplace, and to positively influence their community. She helps people to create compelling content to attract their ideal clients, presentations to build more connection, authority and trust, and client attraction funnels to create more predictable results and time freedom. Awesome. So really, I'm glad you could spare some time for us today, Kat. If you've got any questions throughout the presentation, let's let's just use the chat to put the questions through and then Kat can stop when she when she's ready to, to take any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. And welcome, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have you here. So great to have those of you who are here live. And if you're watching the replay, please feel free to reach out and ask me questions separately. But if you are here live, like Ryan said, please post all your questions, comments. Let's use that chat box and make it an interactive experience. Welcome, Bettina and Caitlin and Risha and Rochelle and Vanessa. So great to have you all here. So today we're talking about copy versus content. What's the difference and why does it matter to you? I'd love to know from those of you who are here live, could you just pop in the chat box? Why is it important for you to get better as a, as a creator, as a content writer? And as a copywriter, so we've got <clears throat> copy, which is copy copywriting, also known as um, copy and content creation in either form. So particularly we're talking about written copy and written content in this session. And obviously video is a, a really important part of content creation as well. But I'd love to know why is it important for you to get better at the skill? Why does it matter to you? Are you growing a business? Are you wanting to raise more funds? Are you growing a non not-for-profit? Do you write within your company? I'd love to know who I'm speaking to here today so I can tailor it a little bit for you. So if you just pop in the chat box, why is it important to you to get better at this skill? And while you're doing that, I'm going to talk through the difference and why it matters to you. So my promise to you is after this masterclass, you will be clear on the difference between each and how to use each to grow your audience. So you might have a desire to get more clients. You might have a desire to be more effective, to, to grow a following, to grow an email list. Whatever your purpose is for, for wanting to get better at this skill, today I'm going to show you how to get better at the skill of content creation and copywriting. So we're going to be talking about both and I'm going to cram as much as we can into the time that we've got. So let me just grab my notes here. So basically copywriting and content creation are two of the most important skills that you need to develop if you want to grow a brand or a business. Most people won't discover you online unless you have consistently valuable content out online. So content is really the driving force behind successful marketing campaigns, but not all content creation is the same. So for, for years, content and copy were kind of used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. And they're both two essential skill sets that we need to think of as two separate skill sets to make sure that we're not blending them too much with what we're doing and the creation that we're putting out online. So you might ask, why does it matter? And I wouldn't blame you if you ask, why does it matter? And that's what I want to uh, unpack for you. So knowing how to write both is essential as part of your communication strategy. So these work together uh, to build a brand, to build a business that people love to consume. We want people to love what you put out there and to look forward to your emails. Who wants that? Give me a wave if you want people to go, oh, I got an email from her and it was so great as opposed to like, 
oh, I'm clearing my inbox. Who, who has those times where you're just like, oh, delete, delete, delete. You know, we do the cull. We don't want to be those people that people just cull out of their inbox or people just scroll on past when they're on their social media or you come across, a, they come across your blog post and they just kind of skim it and move on. We in Australia particularly are notoriously bad for bounce rates. People come to our website, it's like a few seconds and they bounce. So we want to be able to attract people in and keep them reading, keep them reading past your headline, past your first line and into the body and all the way to the end. So we need to get good at both of these skills. So just a brief history of copywriting. It's It started in the 1900s. Modern copywriting grew into like a global phenomenon in post-war America. And many of the brands that we know and trust were shaped during the 1950s and 60s through copywriters. So there were people that would come together and publish, you know, written print and infographics and things like that. And most copywriters worked at ad agencies and many still do work at ad agencies, but these creative type people really crafted ad copy to be able to move the masses, to win the hearts and the minds of consumers. And they built a lot of the brands that we know and trust today. And in those days, a copywriter might work on big spots like for TV and things like that and billboards and, and radio and landing pages and email campaigns. And so copywriting really drove sales. Content marketing, on the other hand, it's it, it also started in the 1900s, but it was all about building building credibility, building trust, building relatability, adding that human element to sales and advertising. So a content marketer's primary goals is to educate, to inform, to build trust, to build uh, credibility without necessarily driving someone to a specific outcome at that point in time. So if you think about what you create in two distinct buckets, are you creating to build trust, credibility, um, humanness, people to actually know you, like you, trust you, uh, or are you writing to actually get someone to take a specific action like get out their credit card? So content marketing is sharing really valuable insights to attract a relevant audience. So someone who could potentially become a lead, a client, a uh, a collaboration, whatever it is that you're wanting from the outcome of your content. It's designed to engage people and educate people and shift people's beliefs for free. So we give free value in exchange for people's attention. Attention is the one most important thing that we as marketers are all wanting is we need more attention, which is one of the reasons I combine content, written content with video with events to get more attention. Um, so content builds that um, relationship um, where people form a connection with you and your brand. And you'll notice, uh, particularly in the last few years, that more people are becoming personal brands rather than big company brands. So you see more ads being run where people are at home um, with their phone shaking around and it's not so up in the ivory tower feel. So you want your, your content strategy to be built around the intention of really connecting with your audience and priming them. You might want to write that down, the word priming. Content is about priming someone um, with everything they need in order to buy because people are on a journey, right? It's very rare that we come across something we read it and then we whip out a credit card. That's very rare. In fact, the buyer's um, journey, there's a whole lot of work that's been done that shows that only 3% of people are ready to buy. So what do we do with the 97%? So um, I want to show you some of the differences between the two um, from a visual aspect um, and really lay out so that you can see clearly the purpose of each. So you'll see, um, just share my screen here. So the purpose of content versus copy, if you want to look up on the screen here, you'll see that content builds trust, credibility, relatability. It's about sharing valuable advice and insights. It's designed to connect, engage, and, and educate. It's shared from an energy of giving free value. So it's, you're not asking for anything in return. So think of content like giving and copy like asking and we need both we actually need both it establishes the relationship and the connection with you and it primes your audience 
So copy, on the other hand, is designed to present your offer, whatever your offer is. So even though the media has changed, copy still refers to a category of writing that drives readers to a specific action that you want them to take. So these are the words you see in digital ads and emails and um, often in uh, campaigns. So copywriting is usually shorter. It makes more of an impact in less words. And it's really where the sales process begins. So it inspires people directly to take a specific action. So think of landing pages where you go in and the person has, has a lot of copy on their page, which is influential content that inspires you to put your name and email address in or click buy now or click learn more. Take that next step action to click a button usually. It's also used to highlight a desire so copywriters really push on a desire that someone has and it high, highlights an opportunity. So when you're writing copy, when you're writing sales emails, sales web pages, um, anything where you're asking for an action that's not just, hey, comment below or DM me, when it's asking for them to actually go to a link and take an action, register for your event, for example, you really need to communicate the tangible benefits and value of your offer. So a lot of people say to me, um, how long should something be? And there's a saying in marketing, it's never too long, it's only too boring. So most uh, copywriting, it, that copywriters that do copywriting as their job, they spend so long crafting every single word. And uh, just give me a wave if you've used ChatGPT. Is anybody using ChatGPT at the moment? It's amazing. It's such a time saver. And people ask me, where does that fit with content creation and copywriting? ChatGPT will save you a whole lot of time, but obviously it can't replace a human brain. I'm really pushing my bot lately. I'm like, give me more, give me more. And then I'm like, make it shorter and then, or make it longer. And uh, the other day it's, it's, it said back, I'm not going to make it longer just for the sake of it. Every word needs to be effective. And it's quite cool, like just to see how you can push it. But uh, I use it to run, I use it as a filter to run my Facebook ads through. I don't run every single social media post through it, but I run the opening line of the social media post through. I run email subject lines through it and just get, maybe just change a word. Like I said to, to it the other day, give me another word for, effective and it was like valuable you know it gave me a whole lot of a whole lot of different words so we want to um craft when we're writing copy we really need to craft each word because we want to make sure every word is effective however long form copy still does the best even if people are scrolling and scrolling as long as there's multiple buttons throughout uh, we've done a lot of testing on this and facebook ads that are longer are performing better for for us at the moment so as long as the words take people on a story, as long as it takes people on a journey, as long as people are getting some value and really having their mind shift, then it's okay for it to be longer as long as the words are effective. Uh, and also, this is important, it's influential, it's persuasive, and it speaks to human psychology that drives action. This is a really important point. Feel free to um, take a screenshot of that if, it, if it's helpful. Because influence is the one thing that drives what I call, it's a decision bridge. So someone's over here, not sure what to do, just kind of skimming, browsing and consume mode. We all know what that's like. We were just like, ah, oh, entertain me. We don't really know what we're looking for. If we want someone to make a decision and cross that bridge to a new action, we need to use influence. Influence is the bridge. And I'm going to speak about how to, how to use influence as well. I just want to give you some examples of co content versus copy and um, so that you can really see the difference. So content on the left here, we've got articles, blog posts, press releases, white papers, newsletters, podcasts, eBooks, guides, free, valuable, educational content. And then on the right, we've got things like SEO copy. Uh, if you're wanting to create great SEO copy for your website, 
uh, I recommend using answerthepublic.com. It's a great website where you can run things through there to see what people are actually searching on Google. So answerthepublic.com. It's great for ad copy. It's essential for ad copy. Email campaigns where you're actually selling something or you're inviting someone into, let's say, an online event. Landing page copy. So a landing page, for those of you who aren't sure, is a standalone web page where people land. You um, give them the benefits of the action. You often build some tension to show the difference between where they are and where they will be if they take the action. And then they put in their name and email and maybe mobile as well. Uh, I've been putting mobile um, for the last few years where I put um, mobile number optional um, for a text reminder, no calls, because I'm not going to call people. So with that little caveat, a lot of people will put their mobile because they're like, oh, yeah, flick me a reminder. You know, I'm, I want to be reminded about that event. So I've been getting a lot of mobile numbers by having that there, but not having it required. The less um, you have on your landing page, if you just put first name, email, the more likely you'll convert. We are moving so quickly now. If there's a whole lot of things to fill out, people don't want to do it. That's why contact forms on websites where there's a whole first name, last name, you know, all of this, um, what's your message, all of that. People don't want that anymore. They click, download something cool. I'm on your email. Cool. Like there's just almost like an unspoken rule that if I've downloaded something from you, that opens you up to email communication and you can always unsubscribe. It's illegal not to have an, an unsubscribe on your email. So I just want to open up any questions people have at this stage about the difference between content and copy. You're, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask or um, pop it in the chat box. Uh, Richa is the sole owner of your business. From ideation to writing is all me. Nice. I'd like to be more effective to grow my client base. Yeah, nice. So this would be really relevant for you, Risha, with um, thinking through what's my content strategy to create free content consistently and consistency is the key. Uh, I often say to my clients, if you can do quality and quantity, do both. If you don't have time, always do quality because it's better to have a few quality pieces out there in the market than just a whole heap of stuff that people aren't interested in. That can put people off. It can actually be a bit damaging to your brand. People say, be top of mind, be top of mind, but you only want to be top of mind for value. You want a reputation that you are a person that produces really high quality stuff. If you know your topic really well and you can produce something every day, awesome. Like um, Seth Godin, he's one of the top marketers in the world. He writes a blog every day. Well, he did when I followed him years ago. I don't know if he's still doing it, but he said, I don't look at the metrics. I don't care, you know, what it's saying. I just write every day and people read it and more and more people read it. So he's not consumed with the likes of followers. I mean, he's got thousands, but um, it's just about producing, but his work is so quality. So if you can produce something that's just really valuable, like a one minute video that you can put up, uh, a little inspirational, something that you've written and you've put your opinion, your slant on it. You want to build your voice as a thought leader, not just be reposting other people's stuff. You want to position yourself as uh, someone who has something interesting and thoughtful to say. So this is great for business owners. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Vanessa, I run a marketing services business. I consider Content and copy as vehicles for communication. So good. So always keen to hear what others say on the topic. Yes, so good. Um, value exchange is so important. Yeah, thanks, Vanessa. So cool. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, just pop them in the chat box and I'll move to the next part, which is how do we actually create a content strategy? Like what is what are some of the key elements? Because for us to have a content strategy, um, we want to make sure that it's that it's doable in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to make sure that you can stick to it consistently. So there's so many different content strategies out there uh, in terms of where do you post, what platforms, when do you post, um, what type of content do you post? Like there's so many different things. There's, there's about 10 different things that I, I walk through with my clients when, we, when we're coming up with a personalized strategy. The key is it needs to be personalized to you. We don't want to just go online and grab someone else's strategy and just plug it into our business. It's really important that we, we think through like, what am I going to stick to? 
it's all good to get excited about something, some new thing that comes out, but what am I going to stick to? What am I actually going to do uh, when I've got a job, uh, a partner, running a household, all these other things that, that are going on? What is realistic? And what's going to be exciting? Because we want your passion and your essence to come out. We don't want it to just be like, oh, tick the box, I've got to do it. You know, we want it to flow out of a place of like, I can't wait to share with my audience. I've got captive ears and eyes. What can I give them? Wake up excited with an idea, be out running, get an idea and, and just share it and, and be real and be relatable and be human so people connect with you. So when it comes to creating a content strategy, that is my biggest um, number one thing to focus on is make sure it's personal to you. And don't just, it's like, it's like following someone else's diet. You know, there's a diet posted online or, you know, in a magazine, you're like, oh, this is the latest diet. I'm just going to eat four slices of cucumber. I'm going to measure 50 grams. That person who wrote that diet, they don't know you. They just, they followed it. It worked for their body. All of us are different. Like you as a person, your personality, your goals, uh, what what's going to be enjoyable for you. It's It's all different. So there's many, many things that need to go into a, a effective content strategy. Um, great writing is the foundation, being a great writer. And being a great content writer is different to being a great copywriter. So uh, for example, my sister Vicky, she's a, a coach for creatives and she helps people write their first novel or screenplay. And so it's all about creative writing. It's fiction writing. She's got excellent writers in her group. But when it comes to actually selling their book, selling themselves, selling their services, a whole different skill set, right? You, you'd know this, Vanessa, that it's it's like people think it's the same. Oh, I've written a book. I've had a lady who came to me. She's written seven books. And then uh, we started working on her campaign, her marketing campaign, and it, it was just such a disconnect. So writing for entertainment is very different for writing um, to influence. So if you miss the essential elements that need to go into your strategy, you can miss out on, on reaching. A lot of people are missing out on reaching a whole big chunk of their audience because they're wired differently to you. Like if you don't understand uh, buyer behavior types and different learning styles and um, people on the journey are at different points in their journey, different stages on their journey. A lot of people just, you know, show up and just let it all out as opposed to really getting in their audience shoes, really thinking, okay, I um, I think this way, but maybe this my audience thinks in a different way. And so I've got to really drop into their mind. So I spend a lot of time just dropping in and going, okay, it's uh, Wednesday lunchtime. What are, what are my ideal clients thinking about right now? What are my audience maybe going through? Uh, and I connect in with their fears, their frustrations, and really feel it because I used to be them and then went on a journey. Same with you. You used to be um, where they were. You went through a journey, right? And now you're guiding them. You're like the translator of, of the world that they haven't been through yet when it comes to your topic. So it's important that your, your strategy is really targeted to the right people and it's not just done on mass. If it if it's done on mass, your content gets lost online. It often ends up being very vague and, and not specific enough because we're trying to capture everyone. Um, like before I was specifically speaking to um to business owners uh that were service-based and coaches and experts, I was just kind of writing to everyone about mindset. And it was just so general and you just end up getting lost in a sea of noise. You know, you end up not getting that cut through and your content doesn't resonate with the right people. So we want to be always thinking reverse engineering from the action that we want people to take from our copy or from our content and building backwards. Okay, if we want them to take this action, what are all the pieces that need to go in the strategy? One piece of content might shift one belief. This piece of content might um, share the, the benefits of, of your methodology. This piece of content might overcome one of their biggest fears. So every piece of content should have a purpose. So it, it fits together as a strategy, 
rather than what a lot of people do is have like jigsaw puzzle. There's just pieces of, oh, I'm inspired about this thing. I'm going to post about it. Oh, I feel I listened to a podcast. I felt that that was really relevant to me. I'm going to write a post about it. And there's no cohesive overarching strategy where it's just bits and pieces going out. So your audience is confused. And let's be honest, sometimes we get confused. We're like, what am I trying to do here? Am I just ticking the box? Am I just sharing content for content's sake? Because I've been told I need to do it. Or am I really strategically moving someone along the journey towards an action? Every single piece of content needs to inspire action. It's not buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It's, um, hey, we're going to move this little part in their, in their mindset. Oh, this, we're going to build some credibility in this piece. Oh, this piece, we're going to share a bit of a, a vulnerable story and build some connections. So your strategy, you want to make sure that it's very um, intentional. If if I asked you like the, the last three pieces of content that you put out, what was the purpose of them? Are you clear on that? Are you clear that every piece of content has a purpose and you know what that ultimate end game is? So I want to talk through three essential elements to a um, to an effective, powerful, strategic content strategy. There's lots of elements. I just want to share three that I think are the most essential and overlooked. Uh, Bettina says, love that idea, purpose and strategy. Yeah, it's so important. And it's the kind of thing where we can get in the weeds and we're just doing, doing, doing. And sometimes we need to lift ourselves out of the weeds and into the clouds and look down at our business and really be more strategic, more intentional, more thoughtful about it. So you might want to write these down, three content strategy essentials. These are three that I've picked that I think are the most overlooked and the most necessary. So three content strategy essentials. Number one is diversity. We need to use diversity in our content strategy. We need to be doing different types of content. There's got to be variety. We need to be doing a range of different types of content. So content that appeals to different personalities, different learning styles, different preferences. There are actually 20 different content types that my clients and I use. And we rotate between them. Now, obviously, you get your favorites. Um, you, you feel comfortable in certain types. Like, I'll give you some examples. Like, one of the purposes, one of the types of content is to educate. And this is one of my favorites. I was a business teacher for six years. I was a, a, a trainer of personal trainers for many years. And so I loved teaching. I love sharing and imparting valuable information. So my natural style is educate. I love it. I love passing on what I've learned and I've absorbed so many courses and, you know, um, programs over the years. I love, you know, teaching that, but I can get too stuck and educate and I, I can forget all the other categories, for example, engage. So there's, there's content that literally is just designed to engage people, not to, not to teach, but ask a question. So particularly in a Facebook group, for example, you might have just a post that asks a question. There's uh, content that is what I call edutain content. So it's a mixture of teaching, adding value, giving something cool, but entertaining them. So you're more creative in the way that you're teaching them. So you might tell stories. You might um, find a creative way to present some truth. For example, doing a reel. Um, you, you just search through reels and you see the creativity of people edutaining sending a message out with a little bit of flair and, and pizzazz. And for, for a lot of people, some of these feel really uncomfortable. My mentor always says to me, Kat, to succeed in business, run at what you're avoiding. Run at it. Run at what you're avoiding. Run at your fears. And I remember, um, I remember being in a big auditorium once. And uh, does anyone remember when Mike Tyson came to Sydney? Does anyone <laughs> You don't remember that. It was about 10 years ago. And we all went to this big, massive, I think it was the Sydney Convention Center to hear him, his motivational talk. And I was standing in line with all these 18-year-olds with their boxing gloves that they wanted him to sign. And it was so funny, like a mixture of like 18-year-old boxing dudes and their that get up and then like business people like us, because they'd they'd put out Facebook ads to market it to entrepreneurs. So you know those multi-speaker events where there's just 
you know, all day you're listening to real estate and shares and all these things that you didn't really go for. And eventually um, this this duo comes on called Jeff and Kane and they've just come from America. They've just been touring with Tony Robbins. And by then most people had left. It was actually quite, quite crazy. The auditorium was thousands of people and just throughout the day, people were just leaving. They were like, stuff this. I don't, you know, I don't want to listen to all these people. I just want to listen to Mike Tyson. And so there's about a hundred people left in this big auditorium. And I remember um, they said, does anyone have a question? And I've trained myself to ask questions because even though I don't want to, even though I hate the spotlight, even though I go red, even though I'm actually an introvert, even though I'm a presenter, I've trained myself to get uncomfortable in those situations, to to put my hand up and just let my intuition come up with something. And it's scary. Would you agree <laughs> when everyone turns and looks at you? And I, I was just like, I'm like, okay, I've got from here to the for the mic runner to get up to me to actually come up with a question. And I had no idea what to say, but I kind of felt for these guys, you know, they were expecting thousands of people. So no one else was asking a question. Anyway, they were like, run that girl a mic. And uh, I remember just like freezing because I was like, oh, I'm going to speak in this massive convention center. And I just said to them, I really want to be a presenter, but I am so scared. And uh, I was just honest, you know, honesty is the best policy. And they were like, come down on stage. And I was like, what? And so I went down the stairs and next thing I'm up on the stage. And I just had this moment of like, oh my goodness, this was on my vision board. I used to come to the Sydney Convention Center every year for Phylex, which is a big fitness convention. And uh, I used to fly over from New Zealand and I did it for nine years. And I just remember saying, I want to be a presenter. I want that. But always just felt too scared. Like, who am I to do that? And I remember um, him saying, the fact that you're on stage right now shows that you've just run at your fears. And as soon as he said, run at your fears, just something shifted in me. It was like, run at your fears. <clears throat> and I remember my friend took a photo of me and I just got that photo and I thought that was on my vision board to speak at the convention center. <clears throat> Excuse me. And even though I just randomly run up on the stage, I wasn't the presenter, I wasn't invited. It just felt really significant. And it actually pushed me. That was about February. It actually pushed me to apply to speak at Phylex, that fitness convention. For nine years, I'd wanted to be a presenter, didn't feel good enough, didn't, you know, all of that beliefs, blah, blah, blah story. I actually applied and I got accepted. And in 2017, I spoke at the Sydney Convention Center as an invited presenter. And it was such a pivotal, pivotal moment for me that that was on my vision board. And that came to fruition because I ran at what I was avoiding. So whenever I speak, I love sharing just this little idea that you would have heard of before, but maybe just need to bring it top of mind. What are you avoiding? What do you need to run at? What fears are stopping you from stepping into everything that you want to share with the world? Because, yeah, we're talking about the ins and outs of copywriting and content and the, the details, but ultimately, let's go to that high level. What's the message you want to share with the world? As you get better as a writer, your message will reach more ears and eyes and ultimately hearts which is what we want to shift. When we shift people's hearts, we shift people's actions because our thoughts drive our feelings, our feelings drive our actions. So if we want to shift people's behavior, if we want to make a change in the world, if we want to be part of the change of making this world a better place, we need to start with our communication. Shift happens through communication. So developing the skill is key. It goes so much beyond the nuances of copying and content. I'm sure you're feeling that. It's about what message do you feel that you have inside you that can only come through you? Like maybe the message is similar to a thousand other people out there, but the fact that it's coming out from your lens of the world, your lens of the world is unique because of your skills, your experience, your knowledge, everything that you've been through. Only you can say it in the way that you say it. And so I, I just challenge you to write down, what have you been avoiding? What's that next level for you when it comes to effectively communicating out in the world? Maybe you've been stuck in education, but you're not really showing pieces of yourself. Maybe you've been um, 
sharing a whole lot of stories or sharing a whole lot of other people's quotes, but it's time for you to actually have an opinion and be strong about it. And the reason we often don't do this is because we are fearful of what people will think. But all successful thought leaders, all people who write incredible work that moves people, that, that moves masses, they risk that being hated. And you look at YouTube videos that have thousands, hundreds of thousands of likes. They've got hundreds of thousands of, or thousands at least of thumbs down. So the more we get thumbs up, the more we're going to get thumbs down. It's just the reality. So if you want to join those those successful people that are risky, that are that are putting themselves out there. I love what Brene Brown says. I'm not going to listen to the people that aren't in the game getting their ass kicked. I'm not going to listen to people on the sidelines. I want to be part of that group of people that has a voice, that has an opinion, that, that drives change. Think about the bravery and the courage that it takes for someone to change, change law and policy so that women can vote. You know, that was crafting an influential message which is something we can all do we can all pull out our phone today and leave an inspiring message for people it's the opportunity that we have is so powerful so that's diversity it's important that we speak to multiple people because I remember I was um really really driven to have one avatar and just write to that one person and I get it I get why people teach this because it helps you not write to the masses. So it did help me when I started writing a blog. I remember, um, I think 2016, when I shifted to writing directly to business owners, I had a goal to write 50 blog posts a year. And I remember it was hard going because video, you know, you can have ums and ahs and people are more forgiving writing. Oh my goodness. If there's a typo, if there's a grammar issue, we think, they can't be very good. <laughs> so writing is a little bit less forgiving. So I remember just spending hours on these blogs because I wanted to do my 50 in a year. And uh, I was writing to one person. What I realized over time is that I'm never writing to one person. I don't want just one person to read my blog. I want lots of people to benefit from it. Meaning I've got to write to all different learning styles. I've got to write to different personalities. I don't want to miss 75% of my audience who has a different learning style to me. So we want to make sure that we think of the stage people are at in their journey and speak to multiple stages. Your audience is made up of different types of people and we don't want to miss out on them. So that's diversity. The second important essential is consistency and I've talked about this uh, before being consistent consistency is all about showing up with, whether you feel like it or not <laughs> if you don't have a strategy that you stick to that includes creating regularly you'll probably find that weeks go by and you're like ah oh, I haven't I haven't written anything I've got a client who's a dentist and she gets up in the morning, she sets her alarm early and she gets up and she writes for 30 minutes every day and she doesn't edit. She just pours out. And I love this strategy. She doesn't try and fix it and tweak. She doesn't even think. She just pours it out. On the weekend, she's super busy. She's like got her own dental practice and she's got heaps of dental clients as well and health pr practitioners. She's dealing with but on the weekend she's got a bit more space she goes through all of her, her content and she edits and I just think that's a really cool strategy that she's designed for her so that she can just be producing content and she said you know Kat I just become a better writer by writing has anyone found that you just get better by writing it's so cool it's like I don't even need to go and go and learn all this stuff I just need to keep writing and writing and I've found this over the years just by being consistent just by showing up consistently I've got better as a content creator uh, so yes you'll have seasons where you're writing more or less but we want to make sure that you've got something on autopilot like for example every Wednesday night at eight o'clock for the last three years, I've shown up on Facebook Live and it's just a commitment. It's a no brainer. I don't need to think about it. I just show up and I spend all of Wednesday. I don't have clients. I spend all of Wednesday crafting a really great piece of content. And I don't care if one person shows up because a lot of people catch the replay. 
I just know that by being consistent, people rely on me. It changes the positioning in people's minds. A lot of people are fearful that there are people that are here today, gone tomorrow. I had a client recently say to me, Kat, please don't leave me. My last business coach ghosted me. And people are afraid that people aren't going to be committed. Oh, you, you say you're a, a, a mindset coach and tomorrow you're something else. There's a, a lack of trust. So we want to make sure that we are helping people to trust us. Consistency really matters. And then number three, the third thing that we need in our content strategy is intentionality. It's so important that we're intentional, which I've touched on before. So intentionality is about making sure every piece of content has a purpose. Is it to get more engagement? Is it to attract more people? Is it to overcome a belief? Is it to sell something? Is it to build a connection? There are so many things that you need to share with someone before they invest a significant chunk of money, <laughs> right? Um, so to make sure that you're covering all the points, um, you, you want to make sure that you have one intent like one purpose, one intention for every post. We can't overcome 10 beliefs in one post. <laughs> it's one belief per post. And we go all in and we go deep on that. Because for someone to change their thinking, it doesn't require you just saying, you need to do this. You've got to give evidence. You've got to give stories. You've got to back, back your points. You've got to back your reasoning to shift someone. So um, rather than having like a lot of, Post disconnected, like I mentioned, they are part of an active funnel, you know, funneling people through, moving people along the journey. So that is strategy, high level. I know it's because you're all in different places. Um, you'll need to take this and apply it to your own personal situation. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what actually goes in your content. And I teach a whole full day on this. I have a one day free training. If anyone's interested, just reach out to me on social media. And um, by the way, uh, I have a Facebook group called Amplify Your Influence. You'll see um, my name here, Kat Miller, Amplify Your Influence. If you search that on um, Facebook, search the groups, you can join the group. I do free uh, training videos every single week and they are stored where you can access them um, under each topic. Uh, I put out resources. So feel free to come and join but I have a whole day called how to attract clients with compelling content. So if you're wanting to use your content to grow your business, um, I have a whole course on it. Like I've got a three month course just on content. So um, in the time that we've got, I was like, what can I share? That's going to be helpful. So I want to talk about three scientifically proven elements that your content needs to inspire your audience. One of the most important things that we do is not just teach, but inspire, inspire change. Because would you agree, there's a lot of information out there that you can just Google. Just give me a wave if you feel sometimes overwhelmed by just the amount of content that's out there. There's so much information. But how much of it is actually inspiring you to take action? If you think about it, think about the last three articles you read or the last um, blog you read did it did you actually take a new action at the end of it and if the answer is no they probably haven't put these elements into their content so I want to talk to you about three scientifically proven elements that make your content more influential and these are inspired by the inventor of the art of persuasion does anyone know who this dude is this dude is Aristotle. So this is like two and a half thousand years old. He um, really started speaking about the art of persuasion, which is essentially influence. So for this, it's important to understand influence, not just understand it, but use it ethically, use it elegantly, and use it effectively. If we don't have influence, we can't move people. Frank Kern, he's one of the top marketers in the world. He said, inspiring people to put their hard-earned money into your pocket instead of theirs is one of the hardest things to do. But when you know how to influence, you can get people to cross that decision bridge. Cross that bridge between where they are and where, where they want to be. So um, knowing 
influence principles can really change everything for you. And it's an, it's an art and a science. It's an art and a science. And it's a skill. It's a skill that we can all develop. It's why I've named my business Amplify Your Influence, because influence is your ability to get the world to, to change. And if you want the world to be a better place, your ability to influence helps raise that positive change for people. So let's talk through these three elements. The first one is ethos. You might want to write these down, ethos. This is ethical content. Ethics are what you, what make your audience feel that they can trust you. Trust exchange between people is like a currency. It can be given and received. Trust can build up over time, but once you've lost it, it's really hard to rebuild. I remember one of my um one of my mentors when I was a personal trainer, he said to me, um, I said, what do you think about like refunds and all of that kind of stuff? And he's like, refund them, don't question it, give them the money back, done. And I was like, really? No matter what? Like they changed their mind. They've put two grand in my bank account. Five weeks into it, they don't want to do it anymore. He's like, yep. And he just said, reputation over money. Every time, reputation over money. And that has stood me in really good stead. That was back in like 2005 and I've always run my business. Yeah, there's times where people, you know, take advantage but compared to the trust that, that, it, that I've built, the reputation of doing a great job, of being reliable, of being consistent, of being trustworthy, ethical content. How can we use our content to show that you're ethical, that you are trustworthy, that you are going to provide value, that when people come to your presentations, it's not full of fluff and just, oh, yeah, whatever. It's actually helpful. Trust forms the basis of all human connections and the extent that you have influence is largely based on the extent to which people trust you and are willing to, to, um, to invest, to work with you, to spend time with you, to read what you write. And if you keep your integrity and, and treat people well and maintain your credibility, you'll find that people will refer other people, which is the best way to grow your following. So there's three ways that you can build, well, there's lots of ways you can build ethical content, but I'm going to give you three. Um, you can really show your credibility through your personal branding, through having confidence in what you're talking about. If you're not confident in what you're saying, don't say it. Wait until you feel confident in what you have to say, because the truth is there are certain things that you are confident about. There are certain things, like think about uh, tying your shoelace your ability to drink this glass of water. I have hundred percent confidence that I can drink this glass of water. There are so many things in your life that you're confident about. Share from those things that you're confident about. If you're like, oh, I need to do research. I'm not quite sure. Um, people pick that up energetically. They pick up that you don't really know your stuff. Whereas if you're sharing about the things that you feel really confident about, it's an energetic exchange and providing real value. It's so important that you, you help people for free. You don't wait till they've paid you to help them. So that's ethos. That's ethical content. Reputation over money every time. The second piece is pathos, which is emotional content, the use of emotion. Without pathos, content would just be a list of facts. <clears throat> and no one likes to be bored by just facts alone. Some psychologists believe that using human re reasoning is an attempt just to justify your emotional decisions. Whether that's true or not, emotions have the power to trigger action. And the concept of branding is mainly based on brands' ability to cause emotional reactions and responses because the truth is, if you think about the last significant purchase that you made, you probably felt something. You probably felt a desire, a passion, a burning, a tension to have it and potentially backed that up with logic. So emotions have the power to trigger us to take action. So I want to give you three, three ways that you can apply this in your content. The first one is telling stories. Stories are what connects us. It's it's been going for thousands of years and it will probably go for thousands more years. Inspirational content that moves people. 
how can we make our writing actually move people, cause a shift in their body, not just appeal to their head, appeal to their logic, and using vivid language. Vivid language brings what you're saying alive. So think of all of our senses. Can you include some, some kinesthetic words in there, some feeling words? Can you include some visual verbs? where people start to imagine, where you're painting a scenario, where you're evoking their imagination through your content. As humans, we need all three. It's like a triangle. We need all three of these. And as Aristotle talked about this two and a half thousand years ago. This still applies now. Humans are still essentially driven by the same things as we were thousands of years ago. So using evoking emotion, always thinking, how can I move someone? How can that word be more powerful, be more impactful to inspire them to act? So that's pathos, emotional content. The final one is logos, which is logical content. We need to influence using logos. It's also known as reason. If your content doesn't have logos, logic, and a clear flow, it can feel disjointed. If it follows a clear sequential flow, it's easier to, for people to take it in. So let's look at three ways you can apply logical content. The first one is the way you structure your content. A lot of people haven't learned how to structure their content. They just write. And they jump in at a point that a person's not there and it's jarring. So the first, I mean, I've got a seven step um, structure. It's called the attract formula. And it's all about working through the order of the human psychology, because we actually, we start at the base of our brain and we move up to our midbrain and then our prefrontal cortex. There's a whole science behind what needs to go into your content and what order uh, I've got a whole talk on it and this is what I do with my clients. Reach out if you want to know more about that. But basically we need to start by attracting attention and we do that by joining the conversation the person is having in their mind. What are they currently thinking about? We need to reach them there and then we need to follow a structure. Otherwise it's just random ideas thrown out and it's hard for someone to absorb it, to retain it and to enjoy it. So the structure of the content is really important that you have a structure that you can rely on. You also want to reference studies, statistics, and case studies. You want to give facts. You want to give history. You want to give data because there are people in your audience who need that. They need to know what's this based on? Who said that? They want to know factual information. They are what learners. It's one of the learning styles. And then we also want to use things like comparisons analogies and metaphors because it helps people make sense of what you're saying for example I used the um the, the analogy of a bridge or the metaphor of a bridge when it comes to people making a decision the decision bridge and its influence that is that bridge it helps you make sense of words it brings them to life it adds some vivid language it adds um imagery so that is the final one, logic. <clears throat> so Arist Aristotle's lessons that they were basically formed of rhetoric back in the day, and they fundamentally address how humans have been influenced throughout the ages, ethos, pathos, and logos. And it had the ability to influence people, you know, throughout the centuries. Aristotle said the art of persuasion lies in knowing how to combine these three principles in the right amount. And there's not really a right or wrong. It's the fun, creative part of the process. This is where you get to put your creative hat on and think how much of each of these three things do I put into my posts? There are multiple ways to influence the human brain. I've just shared three of them. Uh, but I want to just open up to any questions that you have in our final time together. I hope that was helpful. Please jump into the Amplify Influence Facebook group if you want more training around this topic. I'm super passionate about content because not just because I love writing or talking, but because I understand that the people that I work with, if I can help them to have more of a voice, be more visible, get their message out, overcome their fears and doubts to go into that next level of what they've been avoiding, 
the world becomes a better place. That is my passion. That's my drive is to help people overcome their fears of showing up. I've had to overcome so many. I've had to go through so many coaching sessions, even to be able to blog, even to be able to get on video, to run my first webinar. So many stories. You know, who am I to think that I can do that? What if people judge me? What if I get rejected? All of these things. They are present in all of us because they are at the edge of our comfort zone. Those things are at the edge and we need to push through that pain, that doubt, that fear in order to go to our next level. No worries, Hannah. Great to have you. Great to have you here. I'll grab that link, Jackie, and I'll pop it in the chat box. Does anyone have any quick questions? <clears throat> I wanted to get, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to get <clears throat> talking too much. I wanted to get as much value as I could to you, but um, please feel to reach out to me privately if anything else is popping up. But otherwise, questions in the chat box, pop them in. Um, Vanessa says, you mentioned the daily writing for 30 minutes. Do you think there are other benefits of doing that? I put so much of the best practice that you mentioned for my client's strategy and tactics, but none of it for myself because of fear and time. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, I think, Vanessa, like I was mentioning about finding what will work for you, um, like looking at what you currently do and what you can maybe do to just tweak it. Like it could be just a little tweak or change or a little bit more effort in another area. Um, for example, when I'm out walking, I get a lot of inspiration from listening to books and listening to audio, audio books. So I find just being out in nature and writing in the notes of my phone is a really good way to just consistently be building a bank of like my own ideas. Like I'll hear someone say something and then I'll get like, my own innovative kind of way of saying it, if you know what I mean. So just like I've got thousands of notes in my phone and I get home as a system before I do anything, like not even go to the bathroom or anything. I get home and I put them into a system, a trusted system, because otherwise you've got bits and pieces everywhere. And um, so I think, <clears throat> I think for me, what helps me to be consistent is having people rely on me, like committing to that Facebook live. It means that my writing's getting better. If I don't have anyone kind of checking in or not that anyone's going to say, hey, you you missed your live. But I think for me, like if I, if I was just going to do it for my own purpose, I probably wouldn't do it. But because I've always got events coming up, I'm always creating marketing for that. It kind of forces me to, to do it and become a better writer. Um, in terms of other benefits, I think it helps you organize your thoughts. I found it improves my relationships becoming a better communicator because I don't show up and just like download a whole heap of stuff to people. I've organized my own thoughts. That's why journaling is so powerful as well, that you, you just show up in a way that you kind of, I call it clearing the emotional pipes. You know, it's almost like a, a big cathartic <laughs> download of stuff so that you just, for me, I, I'm more present. I hope, I hope that, is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at like ways to inspire and in, like find some inspiration myself to kind of push through that fear barrier. Um, so yeah, you've given me some, some ideas there. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. Yeah, and I think really getting specific about the fear, like identifying what is it specifically. And I actually write a lot of linking to my highest value. So I'll say, how will, like, if I'm avoiding something, like I avoided Facebook ads for a long time, I just linked it to my highest values. How will running Facebook ads give me more freedom? Give me more, um, those of you that know about shadow values, you can link it to your shadow values. Give me more attention. Give me more um, superiority. Like you can link it to those things that, that are already existing to just kind of motivate you to do it. And fear goes away when you just keep doing stuff. Has anyone noticed that? It just drops away. It has to, if you just keep, keep getting on with it. Great question. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan, for hosting, for hosting me today. Um, I'll hand it back over to you. Please reach out if you've got any questions on today. Um, anything that I shared. I, I love having a chat. Um, and thank you for being here and investing in yourself. It was awesome. Thanks, Kat. I can see that everybody got super excited about that. So that is awesome. Um, I've just dropped into the chat the link for the next event. So the next event is uh, around marketing strategies. Uh, and we have Karima Ryder from Dynamic Online Services jumping on board to take us through marketing strategies. So 
Make sure you register for that. The event is on the 7th of June, same time, same day. It's a Wednesday, but not exactly the same day, obviously, because you know today is today, but you know, it's in a month's time, so it's fine. Um, and if you've got any more questions for Kat, uh, jump into her Facebook group, which she shared the link for there, and, um, and she'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for your time today and look forward to catching up with you at the next event. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.